Theories about what will happen in the year 2012 are a lot like snowflakes. No two are alike. I've found while doing the research for this presentation that there is in fact a reason that there is so much disagreement among researchers about what is supposed to happen in the year 2012. Let's start with a very common claim that on December 21st, 2012, there will be some kind of alignment with the center of our galaxy. There are two main versions to this part of the theory. One camp says that the alignment will be when the sun rises above the horizon on December 21st, 2012, the winter solstice, that the sun will rise in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy, thus causing an alignment with the Earth, Sun, and the galactic center. And it does, in fact, seem to do this, more or less. You can verify this with an astronomy program. There are, however, at least two problems with this. This event is only significant from the Earth's point of view. The precession cycle, or the roughly 26,000 year wobble of the Earth, only causes the effect of the star's changing position on the horizon, and therefore only the effect of a galactic alignment. If you are viewing this from anywhere else in the solar system, it would be totally insignificant. This is only a visual effect, and only from the Earth's perspective and no gravitational force or radiation can be expected from this event because other than the tilt of the Earth, nothing will be any different than the last few thousand solstices. We will be no closer to galactic center on that day than on any other day. And in fact, we'll be further away from galactic center than we were even when the Mayans made this prediction, which we'll look into here in just a second. But if the Mayans did in fact point to this event with their calendar, which we will also look into later, it should be noted how totally harmless and insignificant the event is other than if Earth-based people gave significance to it, either for timekeeping or for religious reasons. But to be sure, it is not going to cause a pole shift or any other cataclysm. It can't. It's only an illusion, more or less. The other problem with this is that because precession is so slow, there is almost no difference between, say, this year, 2008, on December 21st, and December 21st in 2012. The Sun will also rise in galactic center this year on the solstice as well. In fact, here is a quote from John Major Jenkins, one of the major proponents of the 2012 theories, from a part of his website called Response to Counterarguments. He says, in the interest of clarity, I will mention that it would be more accurate to say that the alignment occurs in the era of AD 2012 because precession is such a slow phenomena. Fifty years on either side of 2012 might be appropriate. The other camp of the 2012 alignment issue is probably the more significant one because it's dealing with the solar system's actual location in relation to galactic center. The idea is that our little solar system is moving around the center of the galaxy every 225 to 250 million years or so. And while doing this, it's also moving up and down in a cycle crossing the middle of the plane every 33 million years. So the question is, are we going to cross that galactic plane in 2012? Not even close. According to the journal Nature and others, there is evidence of crossing this plane 3 million years ago. This would mean that we are moving away from the galactic plane and won't be due to cross for another 30 million years. Not to mention that the margin of error in these calculations is at least 2.1 parsecs, or about 6.5 light years, making images like these completely meaningless. Moving on to the idea of a pole shift. Although many theorists disagree on whether this pole shift will be magnetic or a physical shifting of the crust of the Earth, the reason for this happening in or around 2012 is usually cited as one of the following reasons. Planetary alignment, Planet X or Nibiru and its comet's tail, a tremendous sun flare, or an asteroid. The first one is easy enough. There is no planetary alignment on December 21st, 2012. This is what the planets will look like on that date. There is a link on the screen to an online program that you can check this out for yourself, too. Let's take a look at some of the Planet X theories. The idea of Nibiru, or Planet X, is traced back to Zachariah Sitchin, 
in his translations of the Sumerian texts, and specifically to his interpretation of VA243 cylinder seal, which he says shows that the Sumerians knew of twelve planets, minus the sun and the moon, which they considered planets, and this would mean that there is another planet. His interpretation of the seal is wrong. The Sumerians have an unambiguous symbol for the sun, a circle with four triangles around it, like rays, and squiggly lines between the triangles. That is emphatically not the symbol in the seal. The symbol used in the seal is that of a bright star. This symbol for stars is very commonly used, and this is the symbol that we have in the seal. So even Sitchin's basic premise is wrong. For details on this, and on what the seal actually means, see Dr. Michael Heiser's paper, The Myth of the Twelfth Planet, A Brief Analysis of Cylinder Seal VA243, available at his website SitchinIsWrong.com. Sitchin claims that the picture shows Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto too, but the Sumerians didn't have telescopes and therefore could only have known about those planets if aliens told them about their existence. But if aliens told them about those planets, why not about the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, or Saturn's rings? The seal doesn't show any of these features, and the Sumerians thought that the moon and the sun were planets, which they aren't. Certainly, aliens would know that the sun and moon are not planets. Sitchin is picking and choosing things in the picture to support his arguments, and ignoring things that don't support it, like the inscription on the seal itself, which has nothing to do with his theory. This isn't science, it's fantasy. It's also wrong. If Sitchin does know about an incoming planet, he didn't get it from his translations. Another argument against Planet X is the absence of any evidence for it. For Planet X to be here in less than a decade, it can't be farther than a billion or so kilometers away. Even at that distance, it would be one of the brightest objects in the sky. Remember, tiny Pluto is five billion kilometers out and can easily be detected using modern equipment and Pluto is way smaller than Planet X is supposed to be. Some claim it's because it's hiding behind the Sun, and that's why we don't detect it. If it was behind the Sun, it would be moving at its fastest point, considering its projected orbit, and it would only be behind the Sun for a very short time. There are a lot of claims about Planet X out there, like the observatories being closed down to keep the information from the public, which is not true at all, besides the fact that they would need to confiscate every telescope in the world to keep this secret hidden. There's also been postings of pictures and other so-called evidence of Planet X, all of which have been shown to either be an admitted hoax or a mistake of some kind. There are actual pole shifts that do occur, both magnetic pole shifts and physical pole shifts, and we are in the middle of a long process of a magnetic pole shift, the biggest effect of which is that we will have to relabel our compasses in a few hundred years. The following is an excerpt from an article from NASA. Reversals take a few thousand years to complete, and during the time, contrary to popular belief, the magnetic field does not vanish. It just gets more complicated, says Gladsmayer. Magnetic lines of force near Earth's surface become twisted and tangled, and magnetic poles pop up in unaccustomed places. A south magnetic pole might emerge over Africa, for instance, or a north pole over Tahiti. Weird, but it's still a planetary magnetic field and it still protects us from space radiation and solar storms. I might suggest that it's ridiculous to pinpoint a specific date, such as December 21st, 2012, for this happening, not just because it's such a slow process, but because the proposed reason, such as a galactic alignment, isn't even true, thus making it a non-issue. The other kind of pole shift is a physical pole shift. Let's first set the record straight that this would require an event of tremendous energy and that it is not part of any cycle or natural occurrence and no increasing of solar energy would be enough to cause this. We have actually had a few degree shift of the poles in the past, but not a reversal by any means. It's what's called a true polar wanderer. William Sager, in an article entitled Texas A&M oceanographer challenges plate tectonics as a reason for the pole shift. It says, Our data set indicates that this polar shift took place at a rate between 5 and 10 degrees per million years. He said, Essentially, it happens within the blink of an eye in terms of geological time. So what this means is that scientists who call this event fast call fast 5 to 10 million years. And that predicting a specific date for this to happen is again ridiculous. 
especially considering that we are told that the Mayans predicted it 